This session is presented to you by John Baptist. Hello everyone. Today's session will be on OSPF Router ID. Let's begin. Let me ask you, as you enable OSPF on a given router, what might happen first? As you enable an OSPF process on a router, say for an example, you type in this command, router, OSPF, and then you type in a, a ID, which we call it as process ID. This process ID can be a value between 1 to 65, 535. This value is locally significant. You can give any number on your router. The same number on the neighboring router or a different number really does not matter. And this value is basically is used to maintain the database. Whatever the database I create, I maintain it on my local device by this ID called as a process ID. It is mandatory to give a number, but it need not be same on every router. It's locally significant. This is how you start off the OSPF in case of an IOS. You type router OSPF, you type in the process ID and enter. As you enter, you have started the process now. You have enabled the OSPF feature on your router right now. What would be the first task that it would do? Or should I type in any command? Next command, should I type in something else to do something? Or does it start off with some process? What does it do? What's the first thing that the OSPF does? As you enable the process, the first thing that OSPF does is look for a router ID. That's the first important thing that it is going to do. Look for a router ID. You don't have to type in any other command here. Next, router OSPF, process ID, enter. You don't need to type any other command to begin the router ID job. Whatever the hello packets are, neighborship is, that's the second step. That's the next thing that happens. For that to happen, you have to execute one more command. You have to use the network command. Until you type in the network command, that process will not begin. So that process requires an input from the user. But this one, as you input this command, the router ID lookup will start. It says, I need a router ID. Without a router ID, I can't function. That's the first basic thing that I need. I need a router ID. Now, this router ID, we say, it has to be unique. Every router should have a unique router ID. And this router ID is always in an IPv4 format. I'm saying it's not an IP address. I'm saying it is in an IPv4 format. That's again a common confusion most of us have that a router ID is an IP address. So that means if I ping, will it be reachable? No, not necessary. It is just a number which looks like an IP, but it need not be a reachable IP. So we say it's an IPv4 format and it has to be unique. And remember, this logic is applicable for OSPF v2 or OSPF v3. You are dealing with IPv4 or IPv6. Your router ID is in IPv4 format. That's a good part, actually. If you think that OSPF v3 IPv6 router ID is in IPv6 format, it's a very lengthy numbers. It will be a little difficult for us to work on. But here they have made this as IPv4. So router ID is unique and it is in IPv4 format. So how do we get a router ID? There are three options that we have. One is where manually selected by the user. The administrator can decide the router ID as he wants. And that could be, for example, something like this under my OSPF process, I can mention a command like, for example, router ID. Just type in a format which looks like an IP address, probably like 1.2.3.4. There are 
four numbers or four octets looking like an IP address, but is it an IP? No, it is not an IP address. It's just one identity. It's a unique identity given to my router. That's the manual router ID that we have. It's optional, but my best practice, my preference is always manual. As we further go, I will explain why, but again, it's left to you all, which is the best practice you want to follow. And you can take your call and you can maintain a standard of your own, not an issue, but the manual is one of the best that we see. So manual is the first option. Okay, if manually not configured, then the second option is going to be dynamically selected by my OSPR, and that would be highest IP address of loopback. Any loopback interface present on your router, if it will pick up the highest IP of it, and that becomes your route right. For an instance, let's assume that I have a router here. I have few interfaces here. Let's take them as the physical interface, something like this. Let's take some IP 10.1.1.1, 11.1.1.1, 12.1.1.1. And let's put some loop back here. Let's say loop back 0, 1, 1, 1. Let's put another loop back. Let's say 2, 2, 2. When you enable OSPF on this, the router ID is going to be highest loop back IP 2, 2, 2. It says there are two loop backs, so highest among that is 2, 2. Or the third option, in case if there is no loop back, if no loop back configured on your router. Then we are going to look into the third option, highest IP address of physical interface. Physical interface. Say for an instance, now I have the router just with the physical interfaces. The loop back is not present here. And the IPs are like 10.1.1.1, 11.1.1.1, 12.1.1.1. So my router would look for highest physical interface. So it will say, okay, it is 12.1.1.1 is the highest that I see. So that would be my router ID. These are the three options we have. Manual, highest loopback, highest physical interface IP. These are the three options we have. Let me ask you a question here. Imagine I'm using the third option. My router ID is 12.1.1.1 and this interface failed. It went down due to some reason. It went down. What will happen to the router ID? In some cases, I get the answer that if this interface fails, the router ID would change to 11.1.1.1. Some of us learn that way. A router ID, if it fails, like this interface fails, my router ID would change. But in this case, your router ID, what you need to learn is, it's always stable. One, in case if this interface fails, my router ID would remain the same. There would not be any changes. Yeah, there can be an impact. The router who's connected here, I might lose the neighborship with him. But in routers which are here, I, the neighborship will be still be intact with the same router ID but I might have lost this guy. That's okay. We are dealing with router ID right now, so whatever happens. But the po point is the router ID will remain the same what may occur now. Now, usually you might have seen that if they say highest IP address of active physical interface, active. Another confusing term. Imagine if I say I have the router with physical interfaces only, uh, and I have the IPs like 10.1.1, 11.1.1, 12.1.1, and I'm running RIP here, and I'm running OSPF here, what would be the router ID in this case? The answer is 12.1.1. So a lot of confusing things are there here. We say active, what we think, it should be part of OSPF. That's what the active word means here. No, the active meaning here that interface has to be up and running. That is what we meant. 
and that is during the selection process when the ospf is coming up when the ospf is selecting a particular uh, interface as the router id during that time it has to be up and once it has selected and if it fails if it goes down my router id remains the same even if you can do a clear command clear ip ospf try it out even if you do a clear command it says sorry my router id will remain same it will never change only way of changing this is if you reload it if you reload a router or you reconfigure the ospf that's another valid if you reconfigure what if if i remove my ospf and reconfigure if you reload or reconfigure the ospf it's as if a new ospf is coming in when a new ospf comes in it starts a new election and it chooses the next available if 12 is up well and good it will accept it if 12 is not up what is next left 11 or 10 so it will pick up probably 11 in that case again i'm saying if 12 was down whereas in the loopback if anybody gives a reason that a loopback is a virtual interface it will always remain up so that my router id never changes usually i agree partially with that i say uh, partially it is fine because if you see the physical interface what happened with that when i took the router id as the physical interface ip did it change no it would have changed only if you have restarted the router so technically it is almost the same only the reasons i would give is it is first reason you can have your choice here you can configure a look back of an ip of your choice so that it's easy to identify your router by looking at the ip address you have a choice physical interfaces you don't have a choice it's basically based on the network design second reason is if in case a reload is done 99.999 percent your router id will remain same again i'm saying there could be a 0.001 percent chances it can change reason there could be some bug on your router we cannot be 100 percent sure of anything here but 99.99 percent we can say that my router id will remain same even if you go ahead and reload your router because your look back will always be up failing chances are very very narrow but when you restart a router a physical interfaces chances are there to fail 50 50 percent i can say 50 percent chances are there that it can fail maybe there's an encapsulation issue there is a service provider flapping issue something might go wrong and my router id might change after reload so picking up a loop back is a right choice the reason i say is to have a choice where you can select the ip you want you have a choice second it remains the same even after a, a reload that's that's the preference that we can give all right so manual is one what i would always personally prefer it because let what may happen let the loop back fail in case of a bug something happens with the loop back it doesn't matter for me my router id is going to be same because i manually configured so i would prefer to do a man hope it's that i know four methods of configuring the ospf the first method is the usual method that has been followed like we go to router 2 enable ospf a process id in this range again if you are working on nx os nexus it's slightly different in nexus they call it as instance tag they don't call it as a process id and you are allowed to use a name you are allowed to use alpha numeric in nx os whereas in ios it has to be an id it has to be a number so os to os things can be a little different so whatever we are learning it's on ios 
90% of the same on any other OS, slight cosmetic changes will be there. You just need to learn them, that's it. So I'll go with router ID one, uh, sorry, process ID one. On every router, I'll use the same number so that we don't forget. One, enter. And then usually what we do, we use this network command. We have the network 111.0.0. Usual practice is we put the network and then we put the wildcard. Remember this wildcard logic is same like your access list. No difference at all. You can play around with your wildcard here. I'll give you some examples as I go ahead, but I'm sticking on to the default logic that usually everybody follows. Network address opposite to subnet mask, wildcard ad address. Okay, then area. Choose your area, whatever you want in the range that you see in a 32-bit decimal or in an IP address format. Keeping it simple, I'll just make it as one, enter. Then I have another network, which is 12.0.0, .0, so I'll just mention 12 here, enter. There is a loop back, but I'm not advertising. Or I will advertise it in a different protocol, router rip network 2.0.0. .0. Just to show you, it can pick up the IP from the highest loopback irrespective to which protocol it belongs to. I am looking at interface IP. I am not looking at which protocol it belongs to. Just to show you that I am putting it on RIP or you leave it as it is. Don't put an OSPF. It would be a connected network. The any ways you want to test it out. So this is one method. I am doing it on R2. Now coming to the router three, the third, uh, the second router, but I have named it two, three, four. And here in router three, I see there are two networks, IP 10, 1, 1, 1, 11, 1, 1, 1. And I go ahead and put in the command router OSPF one network, 10, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, area one. I'm advertising a single IP address here. A single IP is what I am advertising. What does this network command do? What does this network command do? When you use this network command, what really it does? When you use the network command, the primary function is to identify which interface should participate in OSP. Make that interface active in OSPF. Again, this active word is confusing. You, you have to look at in what a point of view they are trying to put it across. Right now, what I'm saying, active meaning part of OSPF. I'm trying to identify which interface of this IP, which interface is having this IP will be participating in OSPF. That's the first thing it does. So I'm active. I participate in OSP when I say that I can start sending hello packets. I can start forming a neighborship. I can do an adjacency. That is what I say. If you say no, uh, sorry, before I go with no, the second thing it does is it will advertise the network present on that interface. Not what you're seeing. Not what you're seeing here. This network command is basically to tell which is the interface, that's it. Once the interface comes in, the interface becomes active. He starts participating actively in OSPF, sending hello packets, doing all kinds of jobs, as well as whatever the network is configured or the subnet is configured, that network will be advertised. So 10.1.1.1 was just to make sure the interface comes in, that's it. It's not like I'm going to advertise 10.1.1 slash 32 to my neighbors. No, I'm not going to advertise this. I'm going to advertise the network what I have, 10.0.0 slash 8. So that's the network command, bring in the interface. Whatever the interface has the details, we will follow that. So it's a very safe way to put an IP rather than the network. I would always prefer an IP address because Unnecessary interfaces may not come. Un 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 unnecessary will not come. That is the best part of using a 
IP address there. Okay, I'll give you some network example as well. So I will go ahead, enter this, and then I have another one, which is 11111, enter, double star. The previous, what I did for an example here, imagine that router had several interfaces as 11.110 slash 24, 11.12.0 slash 24, 11 3.0 slash 24. I had three interfaces, for example. And in this, I enabled OSPF using the command network 11.0.0 wildcard 00255255255 area, whatever the area is. I'm again telling you treat this wildcard like an ACL. Don't treat it like an opposite to submit mask. What this says, care bit, 11 is care remaining do not care so by this single line all the three interfaces will come into osp we are basically trying to identify which interfaces belong to 11. remaining three numbers are not bothered now what if if you had a scenario like this one as ospf and this one as a rip if you try this command what would happen these two interfaces, which are supposed to be part of RIP, will also be part of OSPF. Because you type the command 11.00 with wildcard 0255. What you should have done in that case, you should have uh, you should have used very specific like 11.11.0.0.255, or you could have gone with a single IP 11.11.1, something like that. So keep in mind the wildcard logic. It can make your job easy or it can put you in trouble as well. So if you have a router only with OSP and all these are 11 dot something, this line is very good. It's a very simple way, easy way. But if you have multiple protocols, then you should think about it. So it's a wildcard logic. Don't treat it like opposite to subnet mask. I need to type it that way. Hope everybody's got an idea what the network command is doing and how the networks are coming in. In router four, I can go ahead and use another way. Router OSPF one and I use network 0.0.0, .0, .0 Usually people who are not aware with the logic of an ACL address and wildcard, usually they say oh, you are advertising in default route here. They say you are typing network 00, zero that means you are advertising a default route. No, you can't do that. To advertise a default route in OSPF, we have a different command. Network command does only one job, activate the interface and start advertising the networks present on that interface. But if you look at this with the logic of an ACL address and wildcard, what do you understand by this? This is the address, this is the wildcard, and wildcard says, do not bother, do not bother, don't care, don't care. That means any network present on your router, on any interface, they become part of OSPF. One line, your entire router is in OSPF. But again, take care. As I told you, if you have a router with multiple protocols, you have some logics like this, please avoid this command. This can create a trouble for you. If it is a router completely in OSPF, then this is the easiest way that you can execute. So think about it. So you, I'm just giving you the options available. Choosing the right one at the right place is very important. And plus, I'm giving you the examples, but sometimes we forget it. We learn by mistakes. Usually we say better learn by others' mistakes. That's better. That's the best way of learning. If you start doing mistakes, then it will take a long time to learn. So be very careful when you execute this zero, zero, right? So I go ahead, put an enter here. That's done. Let me give another example. 
if I have some interfaces here, like let's say I have 10, 1, 1, 0, 10, 1, 2, dot 0, 10, 1, 3, dot 0, 10, 1, 4, dot 0. And in this, I'm planning to run OSPR, probably area 0 here, area 1 here, area 2, area 2 for an example. In that case, you can be more specific for area 0, 10, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 255, area 0. Then you can be more specific for second one, 10, 1, 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 255, area is going to be 1. And then you could go ahead and use 0, 0. Rest of them, that logic works out here. We give preference to this line, this line, because they are more specific. Then the rest of them will get into area 2. So you could use 0, 0, or you could have used 10, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 2, 5, 5, 2, 5, 5. So anything starting with 10, 1 can get into area 0, apart from these two, exceptional. You can even go ahead, try something like this. So these are all the possible options when it comes to the network command. Coming to the last router, router OSPF1, I enable the process, but I will not use any network command. Instead of a network command, I can get into the interface that I'm seeing F0 slash 0 and put in the command IP OSPF area, sorry. IP OSPF, the process ID that I have, area, area is going to be one. So I'm enabling OSPF straight on the interface. There's two ways to do. Under the OSPF, use a network command to activate the interface or go into the interface and activate the OSPF. It's the same. So you can just go to another interface, F0 slash one, and enable the OSPF. Again, one of the safest ways you are very sure which interface is coming into OSPF. There are no unnecessary interfaces there. So I prefer single IP or I prefer this interface. But again, situation wise, I also look into if there are too many routers and the single routers completely in OSPF, what's wrong in network 000? Go ahead, do it. So it's all situational based. Look at your topology, make a decision. These are the four possible ways that I know which OSPF can be enabled. So this way, the OSPF is done. It's up and running right now. So let's start the verification of router ID. So let's start with router 2 here now. We have router 2. Let me cross verify, show IP interface brief. And uh, you can see we have two physical interface IPs and one loopback. But again, when you see show run section OSPF, make sure that loopback is not part of the OSPF. Just to be sure that whatever theoretically we are discussing, we are matching it up in iOS. Again, I'm saying iOS. Different OS, it can be a little different. And you need to really look into it so there, as I said, 90% things are same. Little cosmetic changes are there. Little differences are there. So you should uh, catch up those things. So I can make sure here two is not part of OSPF. All right, so what's my router ID then? Show IP protocol. And here I can see OSPF. Look at this router ID. Here. Active loopback interface. When I say active, up and running. That's it. Up and running during election. Once the selection is done, you go down, you whatever happens, I'm not bothered. So you could see the router ID here. Two, two, two. Similarly, if I come to router three for an example and check out show IP interface brief, you can see there are two physical interface IPs. There are no loopbacks right now. So as per this, the router ID has to be highest physical IP 11111. Show IP protocol. And you can make out here the router ID is 11111. 
Now let's give it a try. Let's try a few things. Like for example, let's try adding a loop back here. Let's try adding a loop back with an IP address 333 slash 32, any, any mask, it really doesn't matter. And then I'm not going to restart my router, nor I'm going to reconfigure the OSPF. In these two cases, it's going to be like a new process. Apart from that, let's try anything else. Okay, no restart, no reconfiguration. So what else we have left? Clearing the OSPF process, clear IP OSPF process, enter. Are you sure? Yes, go ahead, restart it. So we have restarted the OSPF, show IP protocol, you can observe the router ID here on here, 11.1.1. Did the router ID change? No. So you say, okay, let's put it into OSPF. But again, we have proved, we have seen it in previously, whether it is part of OSPF or not, we are not bothered about it. But still, let's clarify even that. Oh, how about saying, well, bring it up, bring it into the OSPF. All right, 333000 area one. It's part of OSPF. Okay, show IP protocol. Did the router ID change? No. The router ID is the same. All right, let's try shutting down the interface. Let's say something goes wrong with the interface and I shut it down. Show IP interface brief. I can see the interface has gone down. Show IP protocol, did my router ID change? No, I lost the neighborship obviously because that's the interface connecting to router two. I lost the neighborship, but my router ID is still the same. If I If it comes back, it will be the same ID with my neighbor. Uh, or you say, let's do a clear command now. Let's try clear command as well. So let's say clear it and check show IP OSPF process. Show IP protocol, look at the router ID. The router ID did not change there. Hope you're getting it. Interface S1 slash zero, no shut. Let it come back. How about trying one more uh, extreme option? S1 slash zero, no IP address. Completely deleted the IP address. Show IP interface brief. Show IP interface brief. Look at that. There is no IP address of 11.1.1. Show IP protocol. Look at the router ID. This is extreme this is. You can never think in a live network somebody would do like this, but why not we see all possible options to understand the behavior. Did the router ID change? No, but here, careful. In this, now if I clear up, let's say I clear the OSPF process now and check show IP protocol, there it goes. So you saw a change happening now Hope you got it. In any other previous scenarios, whatever I tried, shutting down the interface, adding a new loop back, adding a new IP, the router ID did not change. But now when I deleted the IP in case, router ID did not change. But when I did a clear command, I could see the router ID changing to 333. So when you clear, you have lost that router ID now. So that's the possibility we are seeing. Okay, let's bring back the IP address. Let's bring in the IP 11111. And now show IP OSPF neighbor. I have the neighbor. Show IP protocols. Now my router ID is 333 because it was picked up previous. It will remain the same until there is a, a restart or something goes wrong with your loopback. The only way to change a router ID without a restart, like you want to really change a router ID and you don't want to do a restart of the router, the possible way is manual. Manual router ID can be done. So like here I go router OSPF1, I put on the command router ID and it says 
it should be in an IP address format. I would use 003. Is it a valid IP? Absolutely no. But is it in that format of four octet? It is fine. And it says you should restart the router or clear the OSPF process. Clear it. Without the restarting the router, this is the only possible, but there's a downtime. It's a disruptive method. You have to clear it. So now let me go ahead, clear the OSPF process. Yes. Check out show IP protocol. Look at the router ID. It has changed to 003 right now. So you can observe the router ID has changed. These are the possible options related to router ID. Hope you have got the clear picture. You know now what manual is, what physical IP interface, uh, router ID, loopback IP, when what will happen. Just keep in mind, once the router ID is selected, they would not change. Only if there was a restart done, then the probability is there. If it was a loopback, probability is very less that it can change. If it is a physical, probability is more. If it is manual, I'm 100% guaranteed. 100% guaranteed if it is a manual router ID, it would remain the same. These are the options. How about having same router ID? Like for example, 003 here, 003 here. What would happen? In this scenario, after it goes with the next step, actually, once router ID comes in, then next what happens? They exchange the hello packets. And when they see each other with the same ID, they start giving you the error, duplicate router ID detected, and sorry, no neighborship will be formed. Sorry, no neighbor will, no neighborship will be there. Just stop it. Let's see, let's see this practical. So let me go to router 2 and forcefully change the router ID. Router OSPF1, router ID 003. And let's go ahead and clear this. Say yes. Just observe on your screen, you can make out here. It says OSPF detected a duplicate router ID from 11111. Okay. We detected we will not form a neighborship with him right now. If you check show IP OSPF neighbor, I don't see any neighborship with that particular router right now. Hope it's clear. So we'll go back, change the router ID to 002. That's what I prefer usually. And this concept will be very similar to EAGRP and BGP. If your router is running multiple protocols like OSPF, EAGRP, and BGP, just make sure to use different router IDs just for the identity purpose. There's no conflict at all. Every protocol can have the same router ID, but just for your easy troubleshooting, it's easy for you. When you look at the router ID, you should be knowing which protocol you are dealing with. So, for example, in my router 2, if I have OSPF running, I would prefer the router ID 002. If it is EAGRP running, I would prefer 222. If it is BGP running, then I will prefer 22, 22, 22, for example. As I see a router ID, I could re recognize which protocol I'm dealing with, and I know what to do with that protocol. Is just a recommendation. It's left to you how you follow. If you follow these things, it is like a best practice makes your job easy as you work on. All right, so that's seen. Now, what if router ID is duplicate here? That is another thing to think. Look at this. Router 3 has a router ID 3003. Router 4 has the same ID, but they are not connected to each other. What do you think this will happen? What will happen here? What do you guys think? Let's see what happens practically. I know what happens. Theoretically, I can explain you, but it's good you see it practically what's going to happen. Uh, neighborship, you can see that they are going to form a neighborship. R2 is going to form a neighborship, but the issue will be elsewhere. Let's have a look. 
So let's go to router 4 and change this router OSPF1, router ID 004. I'm sorry, 003. And clear. Yes. Okay, it looks good. So let's go to router 2 and check out show IP OSPF neighbor. Look at this and look at this. Just hold on. This is head to come up completely. Probably not yet completely up. Just wait. But you can see the process going on. We are we are able to form a neighborship with uh, these two. You can see it's come to loading state. We'll talk about states as we further go ahead. Done. Look at that. I have a neighborship with 003 here. I have a neighborship with 003 here. It is full and he's acting as a VDR, so and so. Surprising. So where is the problem? Where is the confusion? Confusion comes in the database. Once I form a neighborship, next what I have to do in the later stages, in the later stages, I have to build the tree structure and I have to perform an SPF calculation. So when I tried building a tree structure, I find there are two ways to reach 003. There are two ways. So it looks like there is a duplicate. I need to take only one. So when the tree structure is coming in, that is where the problem will start. It says, I can see two identical guys. That means they are common guys with uh, probably it looks like I can reach something like this. I am reaching to a router by two possible ways. So I should avoid one and go with the other one. That's what it thinks. But I know what's happening. I know there are two different routers there. But router two thinks there are two ways to reach it avoid one of them. So what is going to happen if I come to router 2 and show, check show IP OSPF database and if you look at the database you can see only one of them. You can see only one of them. Now who is it? Is it R4 or R3? Let's have a look in the routing table you'll know which routes are coming in. I see 14, I see 13. So I see 13 dot network in my routing table. Let me little move this one. Okay. I see 13 in my routing table, which is here. Do I see 10? No. So router two has accepted this guy's database, not the other. This is what happened. So it is accepting this one. Okay, router two point of view. How about point of view of these two guys? What they are seeing it? Here, another issue. You have to observe even on them. Let's see on R3. On R3, can you see it says, it says an error, duplicate router ID in area. We found somebody having a duplicate ID in our area. Within our area, somebody is having the same one. How did you recognize that? How did you know this logic here? So in this case, as I told you, router two has accepted the router four's database and what router two did, he forwarded the same database to R3. You are dealing with link state protocols. We exchange database and we exchange complete database. It's not routing by rumor. So remember those basics. So router three is seeing the same database coming and he saw the database having a router ID of 003 said oh there's somebody having the same uh, database having same id that means there's a duplicate in the entire area somebody is having so this is the reason we say you should have unique router id whether they are directly connected whether they are not directly connected you should always have unique router id let's not do this router osp of one Router ID 004. 
clear IP OSPF process. I would like to change R5 as well. That's the only guy that I did not change. So let me change this guy into 005. Okay, this looks good. Clear IP OSPF process. All done. Hope it's all clean. Show IP OSPF neighbor here. I should be seeing three, four, five. Three this is the old one, it should clear up. Otherwise, I can force it. Clear IP OSPF process, just force it. If not, it takes little time to clear those things. Okay, now it looks like a clean picture. Router three, router four, router five. All good. Let's try a few more things now. So, see, so many things to learn in router ID. What happened to oh, they came up now. Okay. They were in two-way state, now they are in full state. Another thing that I want to try or look into OSPF a router ID related is, what if I enable one more process here? On router two, I am enabling one more process right now. What will be the router ID for this? Okay, let's check out. Show IP protocol right now. What I have used is a manual router ID for process one. Now I'm trying to enable router OSPF2. Now this guy looks at what's the highest loopback available? It's 222. So enter, have a look, show IP protocol. We have OSPF1 with a manual router ID. We have OSPF2 with 222 router ID. What if I enable next one, OSPF3? This guy looks at the loopback. Okay, there is only one loopback which is occupied by OSPF2, so skip it. Next, is there any other loopback? No. Okay, physical. In physical, which is the highest IP? 12112. What I'm trying to say here is, Every process will pick up unique router ID. Every process will pick up a unique router ID in iOS. So router OSPF3 and check out now show IP protocol. You can see OSPF1 here. You can see OSPF2 here. And you can see OSPF3. It has picked up the highest physical interface ID. So similarly, if I create another process with process 4 and then I check show IP protocol, I can see process four has picked up next IP 11.1.1.2. Next, I enable one more process, what will happen? All IPs are exhausted. I'm not going to type manual, what will happen? And this proves the logic what I said when I started the OSPF, I said, as you enable the OSPF, what, did, what does it do? It always looks for a router ID first. Forget the hello packet, forget the neighborship. It's the first thing I need a name for myself. I need a router ID for myself. That's what I do. So when I enter, you could see what error it is giving it. It says failed to allocate a unique router ID and it says cannot start. You have a trouble right in the start. So that clearly says when you enable OSPF, the first thing he does, look for a router ID. Then comes your network command, then comes your hello packet, neighborship, etc. etc. So you could see it fails. Check out show IP protocol. And you could see process five, it says ID is 000. There are no errors seen here, but show IP OSPF neighbor, you could see five is not running. Please configure a router ID. You could see it here. Says five is not running. Rem remaining four processes are running right now. One, two, three, four is fine. Fifth one is not fine. If you want it, go ahead. Type in a manual route ID if you want it. That's fine. Hope it's all clear. Let me just delete them. They were just to understand. So we will go ahead and delete them. Only one is enough. One last thing I would like to put it across on router ID is. How about having a name for it? 
if you have a DNS, it's well and good. I don't have a DNS here right now. So you have IP OSPF name lookup. IP OSP, sorry, IP uh, domain lookup. And you can configure a name server. I don't have that. I wish I can see them by name. It's much easier than by a number. We all agree that. The internet we browse by fully qualified domain name. We don't, we don't browse internet by an IP address. So if name was there, it's easy for me. So this is an option, IP OSPF name lookup. But I don't have DNS installed. What I can do, I can create a manual entries there. IP host, uh, name, router 2, what's the router ID? 002. IP host, router 3, router ID is 003. IP host, uh, router 4, ID is 004. Sorry. Then I have another one which is router 5, and that's 005. So I create a list manually by myself. That's a little hard work initially. It's all like day zero job. Your day zero is always going to be tough. Day zero is where you implement the new things, you deploy, you bring them up. During that, you plan up your best practices. It's going to be tough, but if you can do them in day zero, rest, you will be easy to work on it. So I did this now and check out show IP OSPF neighbor. Look at that. I can see my neighbors by name instead of IPs or router IDs. So that's OSPF name lookup making a little easier there. Please share your feedback and suggestion in comment section.